so I've got all my grains weighed out into my pan. Pan doesn't look big enough, so I'm gonna have to uh, get into this bad boy. Now, um, as I mentioned, Bear Smith, I've got a calculation uh, on here. It says it's two quarts per pound. Now I'm using one and a half pounds, uh, just over, so therefore three quarts. It's a little bit over, but I'm not going to whinge about millimetre, millilitres. Sorry. Uh, so where were we? So three quarts. Just got to make sure you choose US liquid quart. There is a UK version, uh, which gives us liters which is universal uh, I think uh, 2.83 so as my pounds were over one half pounds I'm going to top that up to three liters for my cold steep so this is the uh, consistency you get with that volume of water so I'm just going to stir that in the smell, even though it's just cold water, is absolutely immense. So the first thing we're going to do is taste, uh, sorry, toast 50 grams of flaked coconut. So we've just got it on a medium heat, and uh, we're going to toast them. Don't know how long. I guess until they're kind of brown, which is starting to do already. Uh, so you get that kind of macaroony kind of taste, uh, which is uh, really quite pleasant. And I think with that extra depth of um, richness, as you can see, they uh, really are starting to brown now. And they don't want to risk, because there's little particles, they don't want to risk those burning. So we're going to stop now. And now we've got you know, a balance of some toasted, some a little warmed. Um, but like I say, I don't want to risk any burn. So I'm just going to keep tossing those for a little while longer until we say that the, uh, the bottom of the pan is not going to scold the coconut. And it smells incredible. I can really see why adding toasted coconut over just flaked coconut uh, really does help. Um, for the other 50 grams that I'm going to put in the FE, I'm just going to put them in straight. Uh, I don't know why, I guess I've got a variable to play with because if I don't get that coconut flavour then I'll next time toast all of them as opposed to just half of them. So apart from the water additions for my mash, here are all the ingredients. So we've got 5 kilo of pale malt, we've got 250 grams of flaked oats and underneath there is 250 grams of amber malt and here we've got 380 grams of chocolate malt we've got um, 130 grams of roasted barley and 170 grams of carafa free which have been cold steeping and as you can see, it's got a real nice colour. Let me get the smell there. Wow. That is intense. Uh, we have got lactose, as it's a milk stout. I'm going to be using all this from Young's 500 grams. That goes in at the end of the boil. Now, this. It's supposed to it says for use after fermentation. Uh, I won't be doing that. <laughs> I'll be ended it, adding it in at the end of the uh, boil uh, with like I don't know a couple of minutes to go or something. Just get it all mixed up um, before cooling and getting into the FE. Um, we've got cacao nibs. So into the uh, boil at the end, flame out, we've got 30 grams of cacao nibs, we've got 50 grams of 
toasted coconut flakes. Now both of these are bought from Holland and Barrett, if in case you're wondering. This is what the flakes look like. Unsweetened. You don't want them having any sort of they have to be pure unsweetened. And then we've got 50 grams of the flakes untoasted, which I'm gonna cover in vodka in a moment just to uh, sanitize if you will. Uh, we're using Safal 04 yeast, uh, good, good, decent ale yeast. Never used it before, but I've seen it used in many stout recipes, and it'll leave a residual sweetness. I think it gets down to 1.0, mm, 10, 12, something like that. Forgive me if I'm wrong, the uh, YouTubers. Correct me if you wish. Uh, and then, 10 minutes, you know, sorry, 10 minutes, about 5 to 10 days uh, before packaging, I'll be adding some cacao nibs, 90 grams, also soaked in vodka, which you bought from Tesco this morning. I bet the guy thought, when I told him the story of what I was doing, he thought, yeah, all right, mate, whatever. I've heard it all before. Anyway. So I'm going to soak these two in vodka. Uh, so next I'm going to get all my bits and pieces out of the grain father, the basket, connect all the uh, the parts, the filter, grain basket, and then I'm going to use the water calculator on the website for grain father to work out mash and sparge water. Then I'm going to have some... Uh, of my additions, sort of water additions, uh, first time I've done sort of uh, water modification uh, based on the soft water we've got around here and the style I'm trying to brew. Uh, because these scales don't go 0, 0.00 if you will, uh, decimals and the calculations ask for you know, like 3.75 grams I'm going to see if I can round the figures up using the water calculator uh, with it, without it affecting the style. Um, if they do, if it's okay, then I'll do that. If not, I'll just leave them out for this recipe and do it uh, once I've got a more accurate uh, uh, weighing scale. So I use the uh, Grainfather water calculator, like I said, and uh, because I've cold steeped the speciality grains, dark grains and what have you, then I've only got the pale malt, amber malt and flaked oats, which is five and a half kilos, which is just under 19 litres. Now I don't get fussy about the sparge amount, so I just put 19 litres of cold water in there. And then to set it, you just click your finger on set. Now I've already done this because it will say 65. But if it was something different, press up and down. Then you keep your finger on set again. And you'll know when it's set because it takes it to the temperature that the water currently is. And as you can see, it's 7. <clears throat> now you can uh, get the uh, mash up to temperature quicker by having this in the boil position and on here flick it down to normal I'll give you the full two kilowatt of power what I do is I normally wait until the last sort of three degrees and then I change that to mash there flick it up and this to mash the top flick that all the way down um, just to prevent it from overshooting the target uh, and it means that you know it gets to temperature a lot quicker because you're using the full two kilowatts of power of the grain father if you're not in America because they've got 110 volts uh, so I guess that'll take quite a bit longer to reach that temperature for your strata water. So we've got to 65 degrees we put our grain basket in with grain stopper 
stop getting grains down the middle and onto the element. Uh, I've just started to add the grain. Basically, you add a bit at a time, stir it, make sure each grain is wet and you have no dough balls. That'll make sure that your efficiency is as max as it can get. So I'm going to carry on adding the other uh, four and a half kilos and then I will attach the circulation arm, the plate uh, that goes on top, perforated plate, and I'll show you all that in just a moment. So after adding all the grains, you add the top plate, take out the overflow, the grain over the grain stopper if you will, and then you push down the perforate plate until you find the grain bed. Like I say, take the stopper out and then you put this overflow pipe on there. Some people put like a, a mesh covering over top of that. I haven't gotten a mesh over, <laughs> like a something to put over that yet, but something to think of in the future. So then we uh, add the glad list, uh, glass lid, like that. Put the recirculation tube in there. Attach the arm here, like that. There we go. Make sure the valve is in the open position, like that, down position. And then we can hit this button here, which is the pump, turn it on. Fingers crossed at this point, it's always a bit of a nervous time. There we go. No drips there. And it's off and running. You'll see it fill and then overflow over the overflow pipe. That's normal and that will settle down as the grain bed compacts and becomes more efficient at filtering the water. So we're now on mash out which is when you finish mashing, you want to stop enzymic activity. So you set it to 75, appreciate it's 77. Sometimes it overshoots. And once it's reached 75, you keep it there for 10 minutes. And my sparge water here, after 45 minutes out of the 75 minute mash, 14 litres on the stove, turn it on. I've worked out that by the time mashing is finished, I've hoisted out the grain basket. Uh, the sparge water is about 75 degrees, which is spot on. So after 10 minutes, <coughs> hoisted it up, turned it, uh, 45 degrees, and as you can see, there's like a, a ridge where this wire stands and the, uh, the feet of the mash tun sits on there and this lets it drain down so this is like the colour at the minute I've not even added the dark grains yet so it's already very dark so once that gets to the plate then we start to add the sparge water which is now at about 80 degrees but cools quite quickly so by the time this gets down to the plate we'll be ready to sparge. When I finally uh, got to the plate, I when it drained down, this is what it looked like. <coughs> seal had come off around the edge so I'm just going to wash that off, re-put the seal on and then get it back onto the grain bed and sparge. So we now flicked it onto boil as you can see you're getting a lot of uh, hot break in the top 98 degrees with a grain father use a paddle to scrape the bottom of the element and uh, that stops it from burning. So I'm going to start stirring now once this foam head is completely gone or 99% gone <coughs> then I'll add my hops. I didn't mention before but I'm using a hop I've never used before called Galena 13.6% uh, alpha acid 
There's only one hop addition at the start for boiling. So I better get back to it because I can see there's starting to be movement there. And I need to start stirring. Here we go. As you can see, the heartbreak is pretty much gone now. So 19 grams of Galena hops. 13.6% alpha acid. In we go. So I'm uh, getting the uh, juice out of the steep grains. You can see, just put a sieve on there, press it down a bit. And there's a little bit more, so I did it twice. Look at that. That is dark. There we go. Got another 20 minutes, and I'm going to add the proto flop which will basically combine proteins together and let them drop out to make a clear beer. Even though I appreciate making a stout, it's still important to have a clear, dark stout. <laughs> I know it sounds weird, but it won't, you know, I don't want it to be murky. I want it to be crisp, clear black. So there it is, all in there. You see the bottom where it's got all that sort of goodness. What I'm going to try and do is heat this up and see if it becomes more um, viscous or viscosity, whatever. Um, so I can get the maximum out when I dump it because I don't really want to be fanning around uh, once I've poured it in. So we'll see. A couple of minutes warming it up on the gas. Let's just have a look. Yeah, that's done the job. Lovely, yeah? So, a little tip there if you cold steep in your grains, just warm it up a little bit and it'll become a more uh, viscous or thinner, if you will. It'll be easier to pour. Here is the colour of the wort. Uh, without the addition this is the colour of it now this is the colour of it now but I must say you need to heat up more because it dropped the temperature down to like 96 so off boiling which isn't great so next time heat up the cold steep to the same maybe close to boiling or but if not boiling before you add it so I siphoned the coconut vodka into there and I've dumped it all in there so I've dumped in the um, uh, lactose and now I'm going to turn it off give it a good stir time to turn it off which is the right button in the middle time to go cool. get in the fermenter get the yeast on done so you put the lid on, attach the water chiller, and then you hook up the cold tap. So you leave this for about five minutes. See so the electric pump pumps it up around there, back through the top to sanitize the chiller. Once the chiller's sanitized, we turn the cold water on. And then second, this pipe feels cold. Then we take the pipe and turn the pump off, take the pipe out. Get a hydrometer reading for OG and then turn the pump off, put the pipe into the fermenter, fits nicely in the lid here, and it pumps in automatically. All right, halfway full, I'll add the yeast. When it's fully topped up, we'll give it a shake. Bubbler on. In the fermentation bath, which is all I'm using at the minute. That's uh, aquarium heater. It's about 19 degrees. Job's a good one. It's 15.9 degrees. And there 
1.061 my recipe 1.060 bang on the money 